Hi everyone, it's me Olya here, you're welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to talk about this one particular alteration uh, of vowels O or E, which change to E in some cases. But before that I would like to remind you to follow my Instagram page at Let's Learn Ukrainian, which is strictly dedicated to teaching you Ukrainian. Also, uh, follow my Facebook page with the similar name, Let's Learn Ukrainian. And also, I would like to take a moment to say thank you so much. My patrons, you are the best. Thank you for supporting my channel. It means a lot. And now we are ready to talk alterations. So this process of alteration, when one sound is being altered by another, uh, have a specific sign. Uh, you can meet it in grammar book, so that you don't get confused, I will tell you. It looks like, I hope I can make it with uh, subtitles, but just in case I can't, it's just two parallel um, vertical lines like this, close together. So if you see a sign like that, pretty much the sign of equality in mathematics, but just, you know, vertical. Uh, so if you see it, you will know that it stands for alteration. The alteration we are going to talk about of O, E. Eh. Uh, are being altered to E is uh, one of uh, the characteristics of Ukrainian language that makes it stand out of other Slavic languages. I'm sure every Slavic language has some rules that make it stand out. I don't know many of them, so I cannot judge, but just assuming. So when does this alteration happen? Uh, I will tell you two cases, but Remember that these are just very these general rules that uh, don't necessarily apply to 100% of cases. So, an alteration can happen first in the same word when it takes different forms. For instance, different cases or different numbers, singular or plural. Also, we can have alterations when we are conjugating the verb basically taking it through different tenses. So the idea is same word, just different forms. For instance, sela means villages, it's nominative case. Sela, villages. But in genitive it will be sil. Sela, nominative, but genitive sil. E changes to e. In this particular case, in genitive case. Slova, slova means words, it's nominative. But in genitive it will be sliv, Kharkiv, the name of the city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, but genitive, let's say, Kharkova, locative u Kharkovi, dative Kharkovu. So you see Kharkiv, Kharkova, Kharkovu, Kharkovi. Let's take a verb, for instance, mich, translates as could, masculine, past tense. But mohli also could, but plural. Nis means carried, he carried, masculine, uh, singular, uh, past tense. And nesli, nis, nesli, also they carried, past tense, plural. So we took a look at different cases, we took a look at verbs, and let us take a look now at how it changes when we make a singular word plural. For instance, one cat, kit, but plural, koti, kit, koti, e changes to o in the root. Uh, rik, year, but roki, years, rik, roki, uh, e changes to o uh, within the root of the word. And the second case, when alterations often happen, again, not every time, but often alterations happen for the words, different words that share same root. Okay, so in the first case, the idea was that we have the same word, but different forms of it, okay? Now, uh, the alterations can happen also with the words that share the same root, but they are different words. For instance, kit cat, but let's take an adjective with the same root, kotyachi, that's cat uh, as an adjective, like cat's behavior, kotyacha povedinka, or cat's food, kotyacha yija. Uh, so kit, but kotyachi, e changes to o. Zrist is an 
noun that means height and the word that shares the same root is rosti. It's a verb that means to grow. Zrist, rosti. Rist is a uh, root, but it can be rost as it is in a verb rosti because an alteration is happening here. Another instance, selo means village, a noun. Village means selo. But village as an adjective in Ukrainian would be siski. Siski. Uh, for instance, siski club, a village club, or silska uh, skola, a village school. So selo with the e in the root sel. But in the case of an adjective, we will have the root sil. Okay, because an alteration happened. Another instance, a noun is neat, neat, but um, to spend a night somewhere, nochuvate, it's a verb, to spend the night, nochuvate, so neat, e in the root, um, changes to o, nochuvate. Škola, a noun, means school, škola, but an adjective, with the same root would be shkilni, shkilni. The root would be shkil or shkol. It is the same root but with vowels altered. Okay, so we took a look at when um, the two situations when alterations can happen. Now let's be more specific. So in Ukrainian, as per usual, again not 100% of the cases, but per usual, when does the alteration happen? We alterate a or o in an open syllable with e in a closed syllable. Okay, now let us remind ourselves what is an open syllable. We consider a syllable open if it ends in a vowel. And therefore we consider a syllable closed if it ends in Take a guess, correct, if it ends in a consonant. Let's take a word like kit. It's easy, it's only one syllable, kit. And it is closed because it ends in t, which is a consonant. So, typically for a closed a syllable, we have a, a vowel e. But in an adjective that shares the same rule, kotyachi, we have three, uh, three syllables, ko, tia, chi. So, ko ends in o, o is a vowel, the syllable is therefore open, and therefore the vowel is o. Let's take um, another instance, selo, village, se, lo, two syllables, se, lo. Se is an open syllable, it ends in e, which is a vowel, therefore it makes sense that the vowel is e. But let us take the same word but in different uh, form. Uh, for instance, koho choho sil, genitive case of the word selo, sil. It's also one syllable but it is closed because sil ends in l. L is a consonant, therefore the vowel of the syllable would be E. Sim is a number, it means seven. Sim is again one syllable and then M, a closed syllable, E. But koho choho, a genitive case, semi, the same word but just different uh, form, semi, uh, two syllables, se and me and the syllable se is open, it ends in a vowel, e, therefore the vowel of the syllable is e. Škola, škola, two syllables, ško and la. Syllable ško is an open one, therefore we have o. But shall we take an adjective, škilni, škilni, also two syllables, škilni, but in this case the syllable škil is closed. It ends in l, soft l, which is anyway a consonant, and therefore we consider it closed, and therefore the vowel of it is e. 
Dual alterations happen always in 100% of the cases. Well, as I told you, not always. And let us take a look at some exceptions when we don't alterate, even though following the rules we would have to. So we don't change O or E to E when first when we have groups or R or of and these groups are in between of consonants. For instance, in the word borg, borg, it means depth. So borg, we see the group or, and it is between uh, two consonants, b and h, borg. So in that case, no matter what, the o will stay in the root and will not be alterated. Shovk, silk, there is group of, and it is between consonants sh and k, shovk. Therefore, in this particular root, uh, the O will stay, where, uh, per usual, we would have alteration. Czerveń, Povny, Wolk, and words like that. In that case, no alterations. Second, in sound combinations, Oro, Olo, Ere, Ele. Oh, wow, it's hard. For instance, berg means uh, shore, like seashore or a bank of a river. Berg, holod, hunger, holod, cheres, through or within, horoch, beans. In this case, we also don't do alteration. Number three, in genitive case, neuter gender nouns that end in enya. This e in enya will not be altered to e. In genitive case, pay attention. For instance, reczenia, a sentence, but in genitive, reczeń, not reczeń, but reczeń. Rishenia, decision, in genitive, rishenia, not rishin. Pobaczenia, a date, in genitive, pobaczeń, not pobaczeń. Dosiahnenia, achievement, genitive, dosiahnen. So yeah, I have tried my best to give you the rules of how this very specific for Ukrainian language alteration of O, E with E happens. But do remember that these rules are very general and every rule has exceptions. This is how rules work and I don't make the rules. So yeah, again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. If you still have any questions, don't hesitate and leave them down below. If you have any interesting topic suggestions, also don't keep them for yourself. Share with me, who knows, I might film a video on your request. Thanks again, I will see you in my next video, hopefully very soon. Bye!